So now we go on to the next bit, which is building the actual cross tool chain and temporary tools. Now the there's two parts to this. There's um, Linux from scratch used to be built in such a way that wasn't um, well. It was good the way it was built because it tried to divorce the new system from the existing host system, which is um, a problem that needs to be um, surmounted. Uh, what they do now, since 10.0, they uh, build it as if it was a cross compile. So they, although it's a, really a native compile, it's built in such a way as if it was a cross compile. This helps uh, divorce the new system from the host system. Um, otherwise, there would be links in the new system referring to the old system, which could cause problem when we boot the new system. So it's quite a complicated com concept if you've never come across it, across it before. But they've got a couple of pages here which um, explains um, how the cross com compilation um, builds. Uh, it, well, sorry, it's one page actually. It's this page here, and it goes on to explain how the various stages um, remove the dependency on the host system by doing the cross compile. Um, so I won't go into that. I I did do uh, a video with um, using a cross, uh, an LFS project called CLFS, which was a proper cross compile package where you compiled for a different, completely different architecture. Um, and I think one of the introduction videos on that, I went to a little bit of depth about how a cross compiler works. So if this page is a bit confusing, maybe that video on my channel might be helpful in explaining um, how the cross compiler works in association, with, in association with what they've written here. Though the write up here is quite quite good. It's um, it's you know fairly self self explanatory. It's just the concept's quite a an odd concept as to why why it needs to be done that way. But maybe reading this a few times will make make it a bit clearer. Like I say, I've got a video on there under the CLFS uh, project uh, uh, videos that I did, which might also help uh, to explain what happens. The only difference is that instead of compiling for a different architecture, we are compiling for the same architecture. It's called a Canadian cross, I think, as I remember. Um, but it keeps that separation from the host and the target, which is why, why it's used. So as you can see, the book is telling us to check that we've got the LFS set because we're in a different user. So we've done that, we've checked that. And there's some important boxes here that we've checked that the these um, prerequisites are in place, which we have checked, so we don't need to check that again. Um, and this is important. This is a place that many novices fall over. It's the process that we go through, and obviously it'll be easy to see what I do. But basically, we go into the sources directory, you extract a package, you change into that package uh, directory that's been extracted, and then you start following the instructions in in the book for that particular package. When that's completed and you've installed it, you then go back to the sources directory and then delete the extracted sources. And like it says, unless instructed otherwise, um, highly unlikely that you're told especially in Linux and Scratch, to keep the sources. Um, you don't want to be reusing sources uh, for packages. Some packages get built to maybe three times. And you don't want to be reusing them in case there's any files left over from the, the previous build. It's always best to start with a fresh, ex fresh extract, even though it adds a little bit more time to the build, extracting and waiting for the files to extract. Um, and tidying up and so on, and it's more typing and so on. It's uh, it ensures a cleaner build if you start from freshly extracted sources. And as I say, you'll be seeing me do that. Um, and it gets very repetitive with the number of source packages that need to be built. It will just become second nature eventually. Uh, even possibly quite tedious, unfortunately. Some. Some packages are quite similar the way they're built. They can be a little bit tedious, but most packages are different in such a way that it doesn't get 
too tedious. Uh, but it's fun knowing that you're building a system from scratch using these instructions, that it's all hand built. So the first package we start with is bin utils. So let's do what we're just talking about, which is going to the sources directory. So it's in LFS sources. Let's just double check. Yep, there's all the source files. So the first thing we've got to do, you can do XF um, and it will extract the file, but if you do XVF, um, it will show you the files that are being extracted. So bin utils, I just type in bin, press tab, and you can see it auto completes. Because there's also a patch file, it's finished at the point where the changes and the changes this in the file name, there's a hyphen there. Uh, but here with the actual tarball, there's a full stop. So if I just type full stop because it's the tarball I want to extract, press tab again, it will auto complete the rest of the file name. If you're doing this on a slow terminal or over a SSH terminal and it's slow, then you probably do want to leave out the V option. But generally, you'll probably want to include it just to see that the packages are extracting as they work. So the next thing we need to do is to change into the extracted directory and then we can come to the book and start typing in commands. So bin utils is one of these packages that needs to be built in a separate directory so we can copy. Uh, again, ideally we should be copying these commands separately but they're quite basic. Um, as long as you saw this line here, created directory, you know it's been created correctly and the CD has worked as well because we're in the build directory. And now we run this first command here called configure, which configures the package based on what it finds on the system. And then we can run the package. Um, we can time this as well to find out how long it takes to build. And We'll get an idea. Um, in fact, we should have run the configure with this as well and the install, but um, the com compilation we make is what takes up bulk of time. And if we want to be sure that all the cores are being used, if we go to another terminal, which we've got here. Uh, Interest. All oh, right. Okay. Didn't realise that hides them. So if we go into top, for example, and press Z to make it red one, uh, you can see that each CPU is being used over ninety percent. So that shows that each core is being used. So it's it has taken heed of the make flags option that was set. Okay, so you can see that's taken 1 minute 38 seconds. With the configuration and probably with the install, you could probably say it's about 2 minutes to install bin utils. So therefore, the standard build unit for this particular machine is approximately 2 minutes. Uh, so we can see how that compares in later packages. So let's install, I'll time this as well, I don't think this will take more than 10 seconds, so it's not going to have a significant effect on the overall time. Well, it's, in fact, it's two seconds, so it's virtually nothing. So yeah, it does look like it's going to be less than two minutes for um, a build unit. So you can see that the full, st 
the install to occur with just one core because an issue in the building system may cause installation to fail with um, having minus J set in make flags. So that's why they've set that to install just on one core. So that's the end of that build. We now go back to the sources directory and tidy up. And that's bin utils completed and we can move on to the next package which is the compiler GCC. You can see that this takes approximately 12 SBUs. Our SBU took approximately two minutes. So this is gonna take, say between 20 and 25 minutes to build in total. So before we do anything, we've got to extract the package. So tar minus XVF GCC. And that's extracted, change into the directory. And now we can start run, running in the instructions. Now these commands here, each one we should run individually to ensure there's no errors. And if you know anything about Linux, then you'll know that generally when you run a command in, if there's no output, then the command has worked correctly. By default, there's no verbosity on commands. And that's why generally, most commands have got a minus V switch, minus lowercase V, to produce some output, which is what these move commands are doing. Just to have the move command tell us what it's doing. So no output is generally a good sign that the command has worked in, in Linux, uh, Unix in general, actually. So that's those commands. We need to run this case statement, which has got several commands embedded in it, or well, one actually, but it's formed of several lines. And then we, as before with the bin utils, this needs to be built in a separate directory. So we create and change into the build directory. And then we've got this massive configure command to copy and paste, let that run. So you can see that only took maybe five seconds to run, so it's not going to um, add any time to the build itself. But now I'll time this again to see how accurate the SBU is, but this does look like it's going to take kind of 20, 25 minutes, as I say. So let's run that off and come back when that has finished compiling.
Well, as you can see, that's taken just under two min uh, 20 minutes. Um, maybe with the install part, it might get up to 20 minutes, but I doubt if it would. So, um, see how the um, static, uh, yeah, standard build Unix are just a guide, not an accurate representation of how long the build will take. So, let's go on and install. Uh, we'll time this. I uh, can't imagine it would be much more than a minute. The reason why, yeah, it's five seconds, it's virtually nothing again. The reason why the SBU is hard to gauge is because you've got to take things, things into account like the hard disk. So, if this were a mechanical disk, I'm sure the um, numbers would be a lot different because the access times would be a lot longer on a mechanical hard disk. Um, probably even things like the type of memory would affect the build and so on. How fragmented the disk is. Uh, so you can see there's various um, issues with the SBU idea, but it is just a, a guide. Um, I use it mainly to know, especially on BLFS, Beyond Linux from scratch, just to know where whether um, a build is going to be five minutes or five hours, basically. So it's good, good from that point of view. How long um, is this build going to take? So let's just finish off with this last command. And that completes the GCC build. So I'll go back to the sources directory and tidy up. The next package is Linux, and this is the Linux headers, but it needs the Linux package. So we change into the directory and then we can start with the instructions. The first thing is to clean the Linux directory, the source directory, with that command. Then build the headers with this command. Then certain files are deleted and a make file is also removed and then the headers are copied into place and that's that package done so the next one we move on to is glibc so once again extract the package Again, it's not completing, so you can see there's a patch there, so we need to put in the dot and press tab. Also, if that doesn't complete and there is no patch file, it indicates that the source directory is still there. So it's worth just pressing tab twice to see if it is, and if it is there, to delete it before you extract. So that's extracted, change into it, and we can start running the commands in. So this is one... Um, command with several commands inside it. Now we run in the patch. You can see that's made some changes to some files. Create the build directory again. Then we've got this command here to ensure a couple of programs are installed into user sbin. And now we can copy the configure command and run that. And it says they might see a warning come up, but it's harmless. Um, and this note here is saying that this package may fail when build, buildings in parallel make. Um, I've never seen that. 
So I wonder how true that is. Maybe in certain situations, maybe with certain hosts, but um, I can't say that I ever ever recall seeing that. So I'll time this one again. This should take only four SBUs, so that's only well less than ten minutes. It's probably going to take five or six minutes, I guess. Build that and wait for it to complete.
Okay, so that took just over six minutes, that one. So you can see how it varies. So this is a warning about LFS being installed, uh, correctly set rather, um, how you can trash your host system. Obviously we must have it installed because we've been using it, but let's check it anyway. And you can see it is set, so we're okay to go with this. Otherwise what would, hap oops, what would happen is we'd install what we just built into the host system and then it would quickly, quickly stop working. <coughs> Okay, so that's installed. Let's just finish the installation now by adding in that command. And then this caution box here just tells us to run some commands in to ensure that what we've just built is actually sane. Just check the sanity of what we've just built. So I run these commands in. This last command should put an put out an output that's the same as what's printed here. So requesting program interpreter forward slash lib64 ld dash x86 dash 64 dot so and if you're building for a 32-bit machine then the output's slightly different and there, there it is there. And you may see this in other places where a similar check is made so it's worth bearing in mind if you're on 32-bit it's going to look slightly different. And remove the output. <coughs> Building packages in Next Travel Service additional check that the tool chain has been built properly. So basically, if the packages in the coming pages don't build, then it indicates there's something wrong at this point. Um, yeah, it says if some package, especially bin utils pass tool, GCC pass tool fails to build, it's an indication that something's gone wrong with the previous bin utils, GCC or GLC installations. Um, if you go back to looking at what the cross compiler is and how it works, you'll see that these three tools together with the headers from Linux uh, form part of a tool chain um, which are integral into any Linux package that's built. Uh, and there's one final command to run here. And then we can go back to the sources and tidy up glibc. So the next thing we need to do is to install a part, part of GCC called lib standard C++. So to do that we need to extract the GCC package again. As it says here, you should have first unpack the GCC table and then change into the GCC directory. So change into it and then we can start with the build instructions. First again, we create a build directory and change into it and then we're running this configure just for lib standard C++. And now we can build it.
and install it. That's done. So let's go back to sources uh, and remove the GCC source directory. And that's done. So what we've done now is we've built a cross um, tool chain which is capable of compiling binaries that are not native to the source, <clears throat> the, the host system if you like. Although in this case it's not a true cross compiler because this cross compiler is capable of building binaries that are capable of being run on the host. It's just that we're um, ensuring those binaries don't have anything to do with the initial system so this is now so all we've done so far is just built this tool chain the next part we're building the temporary lfs system <clears throat>